All right, NL's been real quiet since Tainted Characters dropped. I think we have an obligation to finally... I mean, like, look at these post-it notes. Like, it's embarrassing, right? We beat Mom's Heart as Kane. <laughs> we beat, uh... Something? We beat the, the Light Side Path as Isaac? Like, this is... And we did some stuff as Bethany. Um, but, like, this is kind of embarrassing, right? So I'm trying to think... Who's got the cool... Your, Samson has the cool uh, katana item, right? Anyway, I wanted to... Maybe not? No, that's tinted as Azel. Whatever. <laughs> Don't hit me, you jerk. Um, so, those Star Wars Episode One cans from back in the day. I can't really remember. I remember Boss Nass was on the 7-Up uh, can. And I can remember Qui-Gon Jinn being on a can, but I can't remember what can it was. So Bulba was on one too? Well, I mean, I'm trying to think of all the Pepsi properties that are out there, right? So there's 7-Up, Pepsi itself, Diet Pepsi, Mountain Dew. The Pepsi can was Pod Racer Anakin. Okay. No, I don't think Shmi Skywalker, actually, uh, Anakin's mom. I don't think she made it onto a uh, onto a can. Unfortunately, she was not very well known at the time because everyone was like, "Whoa, who's this random lady?" And then, like later, you're like, "What? That's Darth Vader's mom, dude." Mind if I roll Shmi? Crazy. Uh, spoilers, by the way. I still have the Looney Tunes jam jars that you can use as cups. It's funny, like, I, I guess, like, every generation is going to end up having different uh, collectible merchandise. The, the collectible merchandise that absolutely everybody in my age group had was uh, the Hercules plastic McDonald's plates. When the movie came out in like 1998, McDonald's released a line of, of Hercules flatware that you could buy for like, I don't know, like $4 or something if you bought a Happy Meal as well. Frickin' everybody ha uh, had them on planet Earth. Also, if you live in Canada and you're of a certain age, I would guarantee that you have seen uh, the Montreal Expo 84 or whatever year they had the, the World's Fair. Um, I can picture, like, every family you would go over, and if they were having, like, a nice dinner, they would have, like, the, the Montreal Expo flatware out. It's crazy. I've seen them, like, a billion times in my life. My mom might still have ours. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> I had the Shrek cups. I think it's a little, it's a little uh, past my time. There was other stuff as well I'm trying to remember. Like McDonald's used to sell, at least in Canada, they used to sell uh, goalie helmets, like little plastic goalie helmets that you could get alongside of a Happy Meal. And there were some pretty sick toys. Like, I, I think McDonald's Happy Meals, let's just do a normal run, are like still pretty good by like, pack in toy standards, but they're literally like, they were probably like two or three inches tall or something like that. It was crazy. By the way, thank you for telling me how Holy Card actually works now. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm not even hitting you with like a back in my day because it, like it doesn't feel right because um, I know that there's a bunch of like 35 year olds that recently ran out to McDonald's to buy Pokemon cards that were in the Happy Meal pack in. So clearly they're still doing something right. Oh, hello. Hello, Jay. You're, was this the guy that you called the dad from American Pie? I'm not trying to put you on blast. It did make me a little bit upset that you didn't know who Eugene Levy was. Because, I mean, he's one of Canada's greatest comedic exports. Not just Jim's dad from American Pie, but also, uh, you know, many Christopher Guest movies, including Waiting for Guffman and Best in Show. He's, he was on SCTV, which is uh, basically Canada's version of uh, 
Saturday Night Live, except... Mm, I, I don't want to say it's better than Saturday Night Live. But... Because Saturday Night Live in the 70s was also pretty sick, but... It's, uh... Oh, no! My devil deal. Like, people might not know... That SCTV, also known as Canadian Saturday Night Live... Um, it, ha it was star-studded. It had John Candy. It had Eugene Levy. It had Catherine O'Hara, also from Schitt's Creek. It had Rick Moranis, who you will know from Ghostbusters and Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, and Spaceballs. It starred Dave Thomas. Not Wendy's Dave Thomas. Not that Dave Thomas, but rather Dave Thomas, who also you may remember uh, from Rat Race. He is uh, John Cleese's assistant in the movie Rat Race. It also starred Joe Flaherty, uh, who you may remember as either the dad of the main character from Freaks and Geeks, or alternatively, the guy from Happy Gilmore who goes, You will not make this putt, you jackass. So, you know, like pretty much everybody involved with that show went on to to have some pretty serious comedic roles in 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 Hollywood. I'm trying to, there's probably some other actors from it I don't remember, but definitely like John Candy, Eugene Levy, Rick Moranis. I think maybe Martin Short was on it, I can't remember. Martin Short, yeah, someone said Martin Short as well. Would you look at that? Kids in the Hall. Kids in the Hall's got, I mean, it, it, Canada had a pretty good track record for sketch comedy, man. Like, um, Kids in the Hall, I, I never remember all their names, but like, one of them went on to be the teacher from the Roses music video by Outkast. No, there will be no speaker boxing! And then they go, the love below, and you go, and certainly there will be no love belowing. You remember that? Also, I believe that one of the kids in the hall might have also been the guy who played the lizard in the in the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man trilogy. I can't recall completely though. <laughs> they might just look similar <laughs> now that I think about it. Okay. Um, I guess we're just going straight down. This run still it needs a little gas, for sure. The Lizard wasn't in those movies? Um, the Lizard wasn't in those movies, but the professor who was going to become the Lizard appears as, uh, as Tobey Maguire's mentor in Spider-Man 2, and he says, uh, he, he encourages Tobey Maguire to give up being Spider-Man without knowing that that's what Tobey Maguire was talking about, because he, at that point, was just a mild-mannered university teacher. I would like to say as well, thank you for your support in the long-standing debate I have with my university roommate about whether or not uh, Macho Man Randy Savage says me time or play time. I received uh, hundreds of comments and, and a handful of tweets that were like, he definitely says play time. And I was like, thank you. I appreciate it. Very thankful. I knew I was right, but I, I still like it's one of the most like the moments of my life that has the greatest betrayal is when my roommate thought it was me time and then we decided to settle it by looking it up on Wikipedia or on, on IMDB quote page and then IMDB was like nah it's me time. I, I maintain to this day like he must have changed the listing. Because he's the only person I've ever met who thinks it's me time. Anyway, we, we, this is probably like the most common recurring bit, so we can get off of it. I just, I just wanted to say I appreciate the support. Because <laughs> it's, been, it's been on my mind for, I mean, that was 2006, man. This is a debate that's been ongoing for like 15 years. It's been a long time. Now talk about air fryers. Dude, I'm not going to talk too much about air fryers today. But I will say we went to the grocery store yesterday, as mentioned, for the bubbly. And uh, 
we bought some food. This is how much we like the air fryer. We bought some food specifically to cook in the air fryer. Kate was like, let's get some chicken fingers. And I was like, I've never heard Kate ask for chicken fingers before in my whole life. That's how you know the air fryer is pogging up. And she was also like, you should get some pierogies. And I was like, all right. I'm, geez, you don't have to... Don't have to tell me twice. So I'm looking forward to it. You know, I really shouldn't. But I'm going to do it anyway. I guess we should do it like this, but... This does make it... A lot easier, so I actually might think about about pivoting the run here a little bit. I, this makes it a lot easier to kill the beast. Maybe... Maybe I'll consider killing the beast as a result of this, but we need a trinket to put in the in the room. Hello, I'm new here. I've been on the look for a Crash Bandicoot holding a blue Wumpa Fruit, number 29 of number 65. Blue Hyena Crash? Has anybody... Does anybody have intel? Um... I've never, never heard of it. What's that? <laughs> Is that like one of those uh, ETFs I've been hearing about? Well, I hope you find it. Like, I think, like personally, if I had something like that, like I, it's priceless, I would probably like never let it go. So I, if I were you, I would just give up even looking for it. It probably doesn't even like exist out there. EDF. <laughs> That's all I got. That's the joke. Dunk. Dunk. I want some HP, man. So here's Jay. You're not going to see this, okay? In, in, in Jay's chat, Jay's chat's been real quiet since the pill play happened. Look at that. Pretty fly. HP up's coming right in. What did I tell you? That one, honestly, that's good because it gives me a chance to think. And that one is just the price you pay. It's that simple. Clip farmed. Get clip farmed, baby. <laughs> Every... No! Every once in a while, you got to give the game the chance to clip farm. Come on, man. Come on, man. Worst enemy in the game, confirmed. So is Glass Cannon, it's like permanently bad now or something? Jay, who won WrestleMania, by the way? Oh, it has a four-room charge. Oh, thank you, thank you. I saw that Bad Baby was in it. I didn't know she was a wrestler. I thought she was like, she was just a rapper. <clears throat> yeah, bad, bad baby. Catch me outside. How about that? Tables, ladders, chairs. How about that? You know what I'm talking about? No? All right, that's fine. It was an episode of Dr. Phil a long time ago where there was a, um, a, a rambunctious teenage girl. And uh, she threatened to fight Dr. Phil. She got a very, or maybe it was her mom, I can't remember. She had a very famous quote, uh, Cash me outside, how about that? Which means like, let's fight, essentially. Sure, I don't see how this could go wrong. Um, bro, that was two years ago. I actually think it was probably like six years ago. Um, but then she parlayed that into like a, um, into a rapping career, which is now, like, things are very strange, because the artists uh, who I've worked with forever, for thumbnails and some emotes and stuff like that, Dracula Fetus, uh, actually did a completely animated music video for her. Like, it's a small world, man. And now she just won WrestleMania, so, like, I'm, I'm happy for her. Drac, can I get you to send a message to, to Bad Baby and say congratulations on your victory in the Royal Rumble? Could you... 
I also, I got Chib sending messages to Lil Nas X. I don't think he's done it yet, but... I'm like, hey, Chib, message Lil Nas X so he'll play in the Pummel Party Twitch Rivals. You message Lil Nas X, and if, if he says yes, then I'll message Jugmead Singh, and we'll try to get the... the greatest possible Pummel Party Twitch Rivals cast you could ever imagine. Sounds legendary. <laughs> no, unfortunately, there's no space for Bad Baby. Maybe next time. Also, I don't know. She, she has a history of threatening violence. I don't know if I want to have that kind of uh, energy on my show. Although I have multiple times in the past couple of weeks threatened to pick up chatters. Um, over my head and then throw them through a plate glass window. But I think it's it's very clear when I say it that that's meant as satire. At least that's that's my defense. Yahoo. <laughs> you should be able to pick up people in Minecraft. Can you imagine if you could pick up Steve and just hold him over your head? And then throw him into the lava? Oh my god, that would be so good. He said, no, no! Oof, 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 oof. That'd be good stuff, man. Your honor, it was a bit... Oh, wait, that's an HP upgrade. Hold on. Papa! What the? <laughs> I, I didn't believe myself. I knew it, but I didn't believe myself. Clip farming, baby. Papa! Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. Okay, we can't... Not not 10 minutes into the stream, okay? Not 24 minutes into the stream do we start like that. We're not starting like that just yet. <clears throat> Monday, baby. Clip Farm Monday. Tony Tuesday, baby. A hey, pizza, baby. One key, that whole floor, huh? Really makes you think. Also, no trinkets still to this day. Really makes you think. I gotta say, I, I love the uh, the knockback that you get off of uh, glass cannon. It really feels like you're hitting them with a, like a thunk. You don't need a trinket? You're not unlocking anything? Oh yeah, wait, you're right. Okay, never mind. Ah, nothing to worry about. Can of corn, baby. Can of corn. All right. That's all I got. I'm pretty much, like, bitless. Although this is a secret room. And it has a key. And then you will be exploded. And then there is a temptation to go to the dice room, so I'm gonna do it. What's everybody's favorite bit? I'm a 3-8 sort of guy. We actually went to Home Depot like, uh, two nights ago, we needed a new drywall anchor for this cat tree that we were trying to, uh, to mount. And it ended up being, uh, I think it was a, a half. It was a one over two sort of bit. And then I was like, dude, this thing's freaking huge. I had no idea how big it was. What's the formula for a successfully landed joke? I don't know. I mean, there's there's a lot of things that factor into it. You'd have to ask somebody who's made one, I would say. That's not bad. Like, there's a, there's a lot of contributing factors, right? Like, I don't know if I want this, man. I think it's just bad. Get out of here. Um, like... 
funny is a good part. A callback is a good part. Uh, wordplay or words that sound humorous always do a, a good trick. Like, for example, if, if you can make a joke in hour one of the stream and then return to that joke in hour four, it doesn't even have to be funny. Just the fact that it's a reference is enough to get you a laugh. Do you respect crinkle cut fries or do you consider them an abomination of a potato? That's a false dilemma. I've been watching a lot of rash rational debate YouTube channels lately. That's what's known as a false dilemma. It's a fallacy in rhetoric. Um, that being said, I did see that there was a, a, a viral tweet that was like, which one of these fries has to go? And it was like straight cut fries, crinkles, waffle fries, and curly fries. And like 100% of people were on the same page. That crinkle cut... That's upsetting. Uh, crinkle cut fries have, have got to go. Out of all those... Straight cut can get out. No, nah, man, like, there's just, like, something's not right with some crinkles. Like, some crinkles turn out great. If you if you put them in the oven for, like, or the fryer, I guess, for the exact right amount of time, and they're, like, a little crispy, then that's great. If you don't put them in for long, long enough, they're, like, soggy mashed potatoes. And if you put them in for too long, and I think it's literally, like, a second too long, they turn into, like... They're like hard. They're 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 burned and hard, insubordinate and churlish. So I think I don't know the crinkles. You need to have like a Michelin star to cook them properly. Straight fries, they're good. Curly fries, honestly, like I I think that they're like the least consistent uh, in terms of like texture and consistency. Like sometimes they're like overcooked. Sometimes you get one that was like spiral cut, but all the spirals are sticking together. But I just love the zestiness. Has has there ever been an unzesty curly? I don't think so. And then waffle fries, they, they have so many corners that they're delicious. No matter what. And I think like we've talked about it before, but essentially the more corners a cooked food has, the more delicious it is because it gets more... Uh, it has more crispiness uh, moments. There's more locuses, uh, lo loci of, of crisp. An onion ring has infinite corners. I got nothing against onion rings. I, I see what you're getting. That's a geometry joke or reference, I suppose. Um, I would... Here's my, my only problem with, with onion rings. Is that... So often, you end up biting in, and then as you bite, you end up pulling out, like, the whole onion, and then you're just left with, like, a hollow circle of batter, which is not that bad. Like, there's worse things in this life. Just get him. I'm just mostly saying, like, I, I wish there was a way around it. Like... If only, like, they filled the onion with, like, mashed onion instead of just, like, a contiguous ring so that when you bit in, it kind of, like, maintained the, the, the turgor pressure throughout. That would be the dream come true. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta do, like, a, a sawing motion with your teeth. You gotta do a, a, a sawing motion. And then it's exacerbated because people are really taking liberties with, like, the size of the onion rings that they're making. I get that it's harder to make small onion rings because, you know, onions are a pretty large uh, vegetable to begin with, but... Hmm. Yes? Why not? I regret everything, for the record. And what do you got for me? Lover's car? Okay, hold on. The lover. Two. Three. Four. One. Two. One. Two. Saved. It heavily saved. 
one of the smartest uh, man on the on the planet right there. I'm still so slow though. 1.1 speed. Could you make poutine with onion rings? It's an interesting question. I think the answer is no. Because there's like an enormous hole. I just don't see how it would function. I really, like, I hate to admit it, because onion rings are kind of like the default. I think that the bloomin' onion is a, like, a smarter way to deep fry onions. You, you by having strips instead of having uh, rings, you, you know, negate the problem of having the whole onion come out in your mouth. I, I've never had one, but I believe it's, I believe it. They are obviously horrible for you. Because the, the batter to onion ratio is, is just staggering, but still. Yeah, I mean, if I, uh, if I went to an Outback, I think I'd get one. <clears throat> oh, they're, they're terrible for you. Absolutely. No question. The hole acts like where the fries aren't. There you go. <laughs> you know what I'm thinking now, though? Now, this has become mouth stream, apparently. But what I'm thinking now is, like, what if you had an onion ring, but you turned it into, like, an onion coaster? So, yeah, I know you're like, what the heck is this guy talking about? So what you do is you have an onion ring, but then also a little batter floor. So you have, like, a continuous sort of, like, container, you know what I mean? And then you fill that with the gravy and the cheese curds. So you could eat it almost as like a little onion poutine croquette, if you will. Like a little onion disc. Yeah, like a little miniature onion poutine ring. You could really, I think you could only get away with it as like a food truck or like a carnival sort of food. But if, anybody's, if anybody out there owns Disney World, please let me know. I would love to sell my idea to you for the cost of a one-year subscription to Disney Plus. Home of such originals as The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, WandaVision, and also Forky Asks a Question. How would you make the, the batter fill the center? Um, I don't know. It's more of a question for like the the egg he eggheads down in the center, uh, the center console. You know what I mean? That's not for the idea guys. The idea guys just do their best. They come up with things, and then it's the industrial light and magic that puts it into action. Let me tell you, this is HP up right here. It almost worked. Even though it, it didn't work, it almost worked. One moment, please. One moment. Walt Disney, but instead it's Walter White. That's a good bit. Jesse! We need to draw. Jesse, we need to... Outline, we need to sketch, you know, Mickey, <laughs> Jesse, Mickey. I found, I pills. found pills. Smell my fun gear. Pete Rat, G like Guma Kendai. Say my name. Okay, we, we've gone off the rails. This is what happens when you have a, a long run here. Okay, 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 now we're talking. Stapler is extremely good. It, it, it's so loud, man. Yeah, it's just an example, like, hey, um, we're keeping it positive here. Um... It's an example of chat taking it too far. Yeah, I appreciate that. Hey, look, here's the thing. We all know Walt Disney has a reputation of, uh, you know, 
not being the nicest guy on planet Earth, to put it politely. <laughs> At the same time, you know, whenever anybody says the word Disney, you don't need to slip into character, you know what I mean? It's, it, it, it's very rife for being misinterpreted. <laughs> Hey, what did I tell you, baby? Clip farming yet again. You've made me the happiest man in Springfield. <laughs> oh, not me, friends. Uh, but thank you. He, I think he's talking about himself. One day clip farm, baby. How's this run going? Um, at the present moment, I actually think it's pretty good. We're, we're aiming to defeat the beast. I believe that there is uh, there's a good chance. Oh, come on, man. Um, but we, we got a ways to go still. We got a ways to go. It's going to be a little close for sure. Um, by the way, someone said, NL, what's your favorite clip of yourself? I think about this from time to time. There's a few I really like. Um, I mean, the, the the spray clip in the gulag is hilarious. I'm not embarrassed by it. It's just it's just funny. And then the reaction, for, like that naturally came out of my face, is just it's perfect. It's a great clip. I can't be mad. Um, I also and I I hate that I love this so much. But the clip where we were playing Apex and Apollo says he found an anal receiver and I said, what did you find? A mirror? <laughs> but I couldn't even get the words out without laughing. Like, I think back to that clip all the time and I'm like, this is probably the funniest thing I've ever said. It's, <laughs> it's even now it's got me, it's got me going a little bit. It's so good. Oh, man. Oh, whoa! oh no. What the heck? Silverfish clip is great. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what? Check this out, baby. I'm not afraid anymore. Hey, Waz. Just pop that. Fool card. Donald Duck. Donald Duck's pretty good. Why are you being weird, dude? It's Donald Duck. There's a lot of good ones. For sure. I, I do like... There's a lot of great Dan clips. Oh, I used the fool card. <laughs> I thought I was being so smart. Okay. Well, maybe a heavy rip on that one. That's my bad. Well, if we beat the next three floors in 20 seconds, we could always fight... Uh, fight Mom. Or fight uh, the Hush. Oh, you know what? You're right. What if, if we beat mom and then die in the room? We should respawn outside of the room. And then be able to continue on that path. Now, we'll lose three hard containers to do it. But, like, you know, what what do you want me to do? We're kind of... I, I screwed myself a little bit. There could be some telepills. But, again, it's like... I mean, we'll hold it and then we'll use it later, I guess, and see. <clears throat> I mean, we could, that's true. You know what? We just really need to do anything on this run. So why don't we just make this like a light side run? Yeah, we don't need to... We don't need to get any any freakier than that. Oh, you know what? You're right, there is a judgment out there. <clears throat> we could also bomb every skull for cards. But really, I, I think that realistically... Maybe it's actually like a happy accident, believe it or not, because I, I don't think we could beat the beast on this run. It's quite nice. <clears throat> I think we might be better off just trying to like unlock like literally anything. We'll see. I already, <laughs> I already handled that, my bad. Sorry, I was glancing. Yeah, this is, uh, this is Tainted Samson. He's a cool dude who doesn't afraid of anything. Final skull attempt. We have golden bombs. It's not like it's a huge whiff. 
second secret room potentially. What is this early streaming? Does NL normally stream early EU times? Um, since since January, yes, this is a normal stream time. That's a good get right there, man. That's a lucky get. Maybe, maybe it's not early by EU standards, but earlier than it used to be. I mean, I, look, it's been four months, but it's only been four months. You know, we got people that, you know, I, I've, I've been looking at the Twitter mentions and replies and stuff like that. And there's people I'm seeing some avatars that I haven't seen in like a few years. People are coming back a little bit and, and on mass thanks to thanks to Isaac. What was it before? Before we had our baby, I used to stream like late afternoon Pacific time. And then like Europeans in the chat would just be like, please start the show, it's 5 a.m. And I would be like, no. Like I, I stream 11 to four now. I used to stream three to six. That hurts. Uh, or two to five most days. So like it was, uh, it was a much later start. And honestly, like, this is why I ended up, like, eating lunch at, like, 6 p.m. <laughs> Many days, and... Oh, right, we've already been there. That's fine. <clears throat> yeah, it went, it went very late. Wow, I was just... I literally just stood there and ate it. On the bright side, we did get a range upgrade. Monday, baby. Yeah, I think the new schedule is working out quite nicely, honestly. You know, it's a, a side effect of, like, having a very limited amount of time, for sure. Um, but I, I think it, it leaves me with, like, you know, the sun is still up when I finish streaming, which is really nice. Uh, like, for mood. <laughs> and, and also, like, running errands and stuff like that. Like, it's much nicer to cook dinner when the sun is still out instead of like, you know, at, at 11 a.m. Uh, Reykjavik visibility, i.e. pitch black. No offense, Iceland. Shot speed up, range down. Okay, no, no disrespect. That's fine. You can tell it's not fine because I'm scratching my head angrily, but... I mean, what? Now that I gotta remember, we're just going the normal path. The normal path, you could do it with one HP. Come on. What? Like it's hard? Need to work on your tells. That's why I'm, I'm not a good poker player, man. In this economy. Cobalt is shaving his head tomorrow. Are you afraid? Um, I'm afraid of how cool he'll look, yeah. It's, just, it's a bit of a strange question. I'm handling it in good faith, though. I don't understand. I don't know. I think there's a contingent of people who think that, like... Like, I saw one guy in, in chat the other day. This is not negative, but he was like, I think being bald has helped your streaming career. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I just, I, I remember, you could probably go back into the VOD and, and find a moment where I went, like, and didn't say anything. And I was like, what the heck is he talking about? Being bald has helped your streaming career. It's part of the brand? Yeah, but, like, having hair is also part of people's brand when they have hair. Like, look at Ninja. I think it's it's just kind of a weird thing to bring up. Like, every streamer, like, part of their brand ends up being, like, you know, what they look like, you know? They'll be like, oh, it's beard stream! Beard stream! It's dreadlock stream. Dreadlocks! Get get your uh, dreadlock smiles out, you know? Everybody's Tim the Tap Man. Yeah, everybody's got, like, a, a characteristic that becomes part of the brand. I don't think the baldness has anything to do with it. Plus, I wasn't even bald yesterday. That was, like, the, the most hair I've had on my head in a long time. I hadn't shaved for nine days. Yeah, I got a haircut. 
<laughs> you didn't even notice. Saved. Saved. Smack him. Smack him. Hold on. This this actually requires focus, because I'd also like to get this devil deal. No, I, it's all right. I got 1.25 speed. We got nothing to worry about. Look at that. Look at that. Which hair did you cut? Oh, oof, oof. <laughs> um, um, oof, oof. I know, when I start looking like Elliot Spitzer, that's when it's time to do a little shave. And also, like, dude, I don't know if other people, like, when they shave, they have the same thing, but, like, I was trying to, like, so I, I trimmed my beard with, like, the beard trimmers. Um, and then I shaved my head on, like, no guard. So I have a little guard on the face. There was, like, one hair. It was literally, like, I feel like it was, like, eight inches long. And it was, it's kind of curly, so it was, like, curled under, um my jawline a little bit, so it's like you couldn't really see it. Um, but I could see it. And then I, I focused on trying to trim it for like a minute. I ran the razor over it like 30 times and it just would not trim. It was like steel wool. It was like a vibranium or something, man. But anyway, I got it out. I just, I, I plucked it. But Hold on, hold on. Hm. Keep it moving here. Have there been more attempts on the hidden challenge? No, not after the uh, the accursed stream where I played it for like a few hours. But we will get there like, uh, we'll go back to it, don't get me wrong. I just keep needing momentum <laughs> over and over. Every stream I'm like, we need some momentum, and then I'm like, oh, let's do alt path, uh, hardest character in the game. And then I get nothing done, and I'm like, I freaking suck. And then I come back the next day, and I'm like, let's do, let's get some momentum. And I'm like, ah, oh, this run's pretty good, maybe we'll just do alt path. Go freaking, uh, you know, it's like that kind of cycle. We'll get there one day, though. Yeah, like, so people are saying you could, like, use scissors. Don't get me wrong. Like, I'm sure that's the right way to do it. But anytime, like, I've read some, like, you know, how to how to maintain a beard articles online. And it's been, like, the best way to maintain your beard is to use uh, scissors to, like, trim the hairs individually. And I'm like, okay, what's the second best way? Because I am not using a comb and a pair of scissors to try to get, like, every hair on my face to be the exact perfect length. That's insane. That's like some Patrick Bateman stuff. Like, uh, <laughs> are you crazy? <laughs> and then like the other way, they're like, ah, you just use the trimmer. And I'm like, all right, I'm, I think I'm a trimmer guy. I think I will remain trim focused then. Okay, just just don't get hit here, cause like, we got it. We got some good stuff going. Oh, that was a little spicy. Don't forget about Lil Brim. It's a mighty helpful item in, in many circumstances. Okay, now I'd say we're kind of safe. Safer. Whoa. <laughs> what the heck? You know what? I, I, I haven't done this path too much. I need to learn the tell for, for that. I know you can't stay in the corners anymore, but I, I didn't learn what the tell was. Merci merciful, merciful. You actually, you just dodge the light now? What the heck? It's like using scissors to trim, to trim your beard. I think I'll just, I'll just stick to the corners. <laughs> I did say trim. It's very good. Like, insanely good with, uh, with good luck. That's also pretty sick. That's also pretty sick. Now, the coins, not so much, but everything else was really good. It's a ghost pepper. Alright, you want, you want some momentum? 
How did we not get hit for that? Oh my god. Five luck is gonna give us a whoop. I mm, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. We got nine lives for now. I don't want to potentially reroll us into devastation. Okay. I know it's zany, but the run's already got a, a certain zane coefficient here. Let's just chill out for a bit. It's not cowardly to use glass cannon. Like glass cannon's still really spicy. Oh, rage makes you invincible. Okay. Boy, I wish I knew that at the start of the run. That doesn't appear to be invincible, Toasty! We do a little trolling? Have I been trolled? No, no, no. I got my information from chat. A likely story? You can't die during rage? Okay, you're gonna have to bait better than that. I've recently been hit by bait, and as a result, I'm temporarily inoculated against it. That one's true. Did I stutter? That one is actually, actually true. Have you lost your damn mind? Okay, sorry. Stanley, your heart sucks and you crush your wife during sex. Boom, roasted. Dude, no joke. If we get a void portal here, I feel comfortable. How's that for cowardice? I feel comfortable letting it ride. Oh no, I guess I can't. <laughs> All right, unlocks, unlock. Wait, no, because you need four things to get an unlock, baby. But but unlocks, baby. Look at that. Okay, <laughs> done, done. Slash marker, end of tainted Samson one. Okay, we bubble. 